Salam alaikum and welcome to ING Youth's Teen Empowerment Webinar, which focuses on empowering Muslim students to counter bullying and bias at school. My name is Ishaq Patan, and I'm currently a consultant with ING, and before then I was the ING Youth Manager. In this video, we'll look at the topic of bullying, including various types of bullying and what to do if you're bullied. The scenarios I'll be presenting later in this training were all vetted by middle and high school Muslim students. If you have scenarios or best practices on bullying that you want to share, please write to me at ishaq at ing.org. Let's begin by defining what bullying is. While there are many different definitions of bullying, according to stopbullying.gov, a federal government website managed by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, bullying is unwanted, aggressive behavior among school-age children that involves a real or perceived power imbalance. The behavior is repeated or has the potential to be repeated over time. These three elements combined with how it makes you feel is what makes it bullying versus some other less serious but equally harmful behavior. There are various types of bullying and they include the following. Verbal bullying such as using words or gestures to harm or shame another student by taunting, teasing, name calling, insulting, ridiculing making inappropriate sexual comments, or threatening physical harm. This would be the most common type of bullying. Indirect or relational bullying involves isolating another student from the group by ignoring, excluding, embarrassing publicly, gossiping, spreading rumors or telling lies about them, or making sexual innuendos or gestures, or getting others to hurt them. Cyberbullying involves threatening, harassing, humiliating, embarrassing or otherwise targeting a fellow student using the internet, inter interactive and digital technologies, or mobile phones. Some examples of cyberbullying include sending hurtful, rude, or mean text messages to others, or spreading rumors, lies, or inappropriate photos about others by email or on social networks such as Instagram or TikTok. Finally, there's physical bullying which includes engaging physically with another student to harm them, which includes pushing, hitting, kicking, tripping, acts of sexual harassment, taking or breaking belongings, or stealing money. While other students experience bullying, Muslim students experience bullying at higher levels than average. A 2022 survey by the Institute for Social Policy and Understanding found that nearly half of Muslim families reported having a child who faced religious-based bullying in the past year, which is nearly double the level of families in the general public, which is 27%. The most common type of bullying is verbal, which often associates Muslims with terrorism, using common insults such as bomber, killer, or comments such as, hey, are you going to bomb the school? 35% report that other students made offensive comments or posts about Islam or Muslims on social media. Additionally, 30% of girls who wear hijab report having their scarves pulled or offensively touched. In a 2021 CARE report in California found that 56% of Muslim students felt unsafe, unwelcome, or uncomfortable at school because of their Muslim identity. This is the highest level reported since CARE first began conducting its surveys in 2013. Additionally, Nearly 20% of the respondents reported that they missed school due to these feelings. If you are bullied, there are important things to keep in mind. First and foremost, understand that it's not your fault, and as a result, take extra steps to feel good about yourself. Get the professional support you need to feel better, and tell an adult whom you trust about what happened. That could be a parent, teacher, school administrator, coach, or spiritual leader. Finally, Act like Muhammad Ali or Ibtaj Muhammad and appear as confident as you can while at school. When it comes to responding to bullying, importantly, do not retaliate because you're at risk of being punished. It's better to seek health and counseling resources that are helpful, and documentation is important for later in case st school staff is not responding as they should. There's a legal basis for your rights regarding bullying at school. Your rights are based on the U.S. and state constitution, federal and state laws, and court rulings and the Department of Education rules and guidelines. If you are bullied, 
It's important that you report it to a trusted adult at school as well as your parents. If teachers do not respond, inform a counselor or the principal until you get a proper response. Teachers and other staff have a legal duty to protect students and when they don't, it's your right to take the issue to a higher level like the district superintendent until the issue is addressed and the bullying stops. We will now go through various bullying scenarios and what we can all learn from them on possible responses and takeaways. Let's first look at a scenario that garnered a lot of attention when it happened. A person on social media posted the following after seeing a sick woman with facial hair wearing a turban. I'm not sure what to conclude from this. Funny. People then commented, Beards on women are now in, yes. Are you a dwarf woman? Is this a transgendered sick? Explains why they haven't shaved and the turban. One of those things has got to go. Is this bullying? And if so, what kind? The answer is yes. It is cyberbullying, since it's unwanted, aggressive behavior that is harassing, humiliating, and embarrassing, which is targeting a student using the internet, to which several students also joined in. But now, let's read the response by the person who was targeted which is extraordinary. Hey guys, this is Balpreet Kaur, the girl from the picture. I didn't actually know about this until one of my friends told me on Facebook. If the OP or original post wanted a picture, they could have just asked and I could have smiled. However, I'm not embarrassed or even humiliated by the attention, negative and positive, that this picture is getting because it's who I am. Yes, I'm a baptized sick woman with facial hair. Yes, I realize that my gender is often confused, and I look different than most women. However, baptized Sikhs believe in the sacredness of the body. It is a gift that has been given to us by the divine being, which is genderless actually, and, must keep an, and we must keep it intact as a submission to the divine will. Just as a child doesn't reject the gift from his or her parents, Sikhs do not reject the body that has been given to us. By crying mine, mine, and changing this body tool, we're essentially living in ego and creating a separateness between ourselves and the divinity within us. By transcending societal views of beauty, I believe that I can focus more on my actions. My attitudes and thoughts and actions have more value in them than my body because I recognize that this body is just going to become ash in the end. So why fuss about it? When I die, no one is going to remember how I looked. Heck, my kids will forget my voice, and slowly, all physical memory will fade away. However, my impact and legacy will remain. And by not focusing on the physical beauty, I have time to cultivate those inner virtues and hopefully focus my life on creating change and progress for this world in any way I can. So to me, my face is an important but the smile and the happiness that lie behind the face are. So if anyone sees me at OSU, please come up and say hello. I appreciate all of the comments here, both positive and less positive, because I've gotten a better understanding of myself and others from this. And the yoga plants are quite comfortable, and the Better Together t-shirt is actually from Interfaith Youth Corps, an organization that focuses on storytelling and engagement between different faiths. I hope this explains everything a bit more, and I apologize for causing such confusion and uttering anything that hurt anyone. In response to her gracious response, the perpetrator apologized and expressed admiration for her faith. I know that this post isn't a funny post, but I felt the need to apologize to the six, Balpreet, and anyone else I offended when I posted that picture. Put simply, it was stupid. Making fun of people is funny to some, but incredibly degrading to the people you're making fun of. It was an incredibly rude, judgmental, and ignorant thing to post. Skipping ahead, I've read more about the Sikh faith, and it's actually really interesting. It makes a whole lot of sense to work on having a legacy and not worrying about what you look like. I made this post for stupid internet points, and I was ignorant. So Reddit, I'm sorry for being a blank, and I'm for giving you negative publicity, Balpreet, I'm sorry for being a closed-minded individual. You are a much better person than I am. Six, I'm sorry for insulting your culture and way of life. Balpreet's faith in what she believes is astounding. This scenario 
shows the importance of responding to bullying with dignity, self-respect, and confidence. It's also useful, depending on the situation, to assume that the bully could be acting out of ignorance of our religion. This doesn't excuse the bully, but considering the possibility of ignorance helps us in the kind response we want to have. This scenario also shows that people can change their opinions or beliefs through education, when we're willing to offer it with dignity and without apology. Now, if the bully continued to attack the sick girl, then it would be very appropriate to report it immediately to the school principal. Let's now look at another scenario and how to proceed. After school, while the students are waiting for their school bus, student A attempts to tug off the hijab of student B. Students C, D, and E stand around watching, and they don't do anything. Is this bullying, and if so, what kind? Yes, this is physical bullying, the most serious kind. The students watching and not doing anything are signaling to the perpetrator that it is, that it is okay to assault another student. When thinking about best practices, Muslim student B moves away and says, if you touch me again, I'm going to report you to school authorities. What you did is considered assault. Student C and E step in between A, student A the bully, and Muslim student B the one being harassed. And student D asks Muslim student B if sh how she's feeling and then offers support. The takeaway here is be an upstander when you see someone being bullied, and if you're the one being bullied, then speak up against it. Our next scenario is in a lunch line. While waiting in line in the cafeteria, student A asks Muslim student B, hey, don't you Muslims worship one of those weird elephant gods? Students C and D are watching, and student C is also Muslim. Is this bullying, and if so, what kind? Yes, this is verbal bullying, especially when no one speaks up against it, so it will be likely repeated when we signal to the perpetrator that it's okay to make fun of and humiliate a fellow student. In terms of a best practice response, Muslim student C jumps in and says, No, Muslims do not worship an elephant god. They worship the same god as Christians and Jews, the god of Abraham. They then continue, You may be thinking of some Hindus who worship a god named Ganesh who has the head of an elephant. I don't know much about Hinduism, but saying that one of their gods is weird is very disrespectful. Maybe all of us could learn a little bit more about their religion. Student D would then say something like, I'd love to learn a little bit more about Hinduism. The takeaway here is be respectful of other religions as you would want people to respect your own. This next scenario takes place in the classroom. Bullying can be done by teachers or other school staff. In fact, according to a recent survey, 25% of bullying of Muslim students happens by adults in the school. While teaching about Islam in a social studies class, the teacher makes an offensive comment about Muslims. The class laughs, and the only Muslim student in the class feels ashamed. Is this bullying? Yes, it's verbal, it's verbal bullying if it's not addressed and corrected. The Muslim student informs the teacher how his or her derogatory comment made them feel or how inaccurate it was. Consider the possibility that the comment was not purposeful depending on the teacher's intention and the language used. In response, the Muslim student asks if he can give a presentation about Muslims to the class. The teacher then gives him the opportunity to present about his faith and practices to the rest of the class. The other students appreciate learning from him and express their appreciation, and the teacher apologizes for his or her comment. The takeaway here is take the opportunity to teach others about your religion. We have several presentations available on the ING Youth website where you're watching this training. Just go over to the Presentations tab. We also have answers to frequently asked questions about Islam and Muslims. If you're uncomfortable presenting to your class, ING has speakers that can. I'll give you their contact information after this training. Our last scenario is in the hallway. While sitting in front of his locker before school, student A asks Muslim student B, hey, are you planning on bombing the school? Is this bullying? It is certainly verbal harassment, 
even if the person said it was a friend of yours. It becomes bullying if it continues and doesn't stop. Now in this situation, Muslim student B responds, Yes, I got my pressure cooker ready to go. Is this a good response? No, it is never acceptable to joke about violence. A better response would be something like this. That's an inappropriate and unacceptable thing to say about such a serious issue, even as a joke. Remember that even if the person who said it is a friend of yours, if you don't challenge an inappropriate joke about Muslims or Islam, you may subject the next Muslim to that same offensive joke. So you'll want to put a stop to it right then and there. Thanks for watching and I hope this was helpful. Make sure to go through the ING Youth website for answers to frequently asked questions about Islam and Muslims, as well as PowerPoint presentations that you can use to present about Islam in your school and respond to questions. If you want to reach an ING staff person, write to mail at ing.org.